Hi, and welcome to a little tutorial on how you can access the assistive technology that's built right into your iPad. In this little video, we're gonna focus on three aspects. That is speech to text, text to speech, and pronunciation of words, phrases, names, and how the, the reading back to us can be corrected if it's not saying things correctly. So we'll get started with speech to text. And to do that, we're gonna jump straight into our iPad and I'm gonna jump straight into the settings app and bring it up there. On the left hand side, I'm down to general and on the right hand side, I'm gonna move down to keyboard. Tap on that. Within keyboard settings, I have a whole raft of toggles I can turn on and off. At the very bottom or near the bottom, I have enable dictation, which I'm going to switch on. Enable dictation. If you've never used dictation before, um, you may need to spend a couple of minutes just to download a library or dictionary for it to be able to work. So with that turned on, I want to give it a little bit of a test. So I'm going to jump into the app Pages. Pages will allow me to type into it. Now what's really important here is that by turning on Enable Dictation, a little microphone button just to the left of the space bar has appeared. That's what's going to allow me to do the dictation. Any app that requires a keyboard will have the dictation ability there. So even if it's a creating a note, searching up the web, as long as the keyboard is there, we have the ability to dictate. So I'm gonna tap that microphone to give this a test. Hello, and welcome to a tutorial on assistive technologies. Full stop, new line. My name is Matt, and I am dictating into the app pages. Full stop. So it's done a pretty good job of putting my voice into text. A couple of things that I want to correct, however. So up here where we've got assistive technology, assistive technology should probably have capital A and capital T. Now for some people moving their cursor about can be a little bit frustrating or a little bit uh, tedious and moving it about. There is actually an easier way. Two fingers, if I press down on my trackpad, become on my keyboard I should say, becomes a trackpad. So I can move my cursor behind the A, capital A. Two fingers, move it to behind the T and capital T. And pages being the name of an app, I'll bring it down there and put a capital P. Also for the fact that technologies is what I said, I'll drop the Y and add IES. And now we have corrected it. So it looks pretty good. So that's great. We can now use dictation to put text into a field wherever we need it. Like I said, if we wanted to put it into a web search or into a note or whatever requires text. But what if we want to flip it? What if we want to have it read it back to us? So we need to do something called enabling select, uh, speak selection. Got it out there. So let's jump back into our device and back into settings. Instead of being in general, we're gonna jump down a little bit to accessibility. I'll tap on that and open it up. Accessibility is broken up into some clusters. We start with vision at the top, physical and motor, hearing and general. So I'm gonna stay in the top one vision and second to bottom of that is spoken content. So I'll tap and open that one up. In here I have speak selection at the top. I'm going to turn that on. Now a couple of things that we can look at in here. Number one, voices. If I tap on voices, I can choose how I want this to work. For me, of course, being English is my preferred language and I've chosen Siri female. And what's really important here is that Australia in brackets has been selected because the dialect is pretty good. So I tapped on English Australia and this is what I get some choices in here. Different versions of English. So if I come back out, the other thing I can have a look at too is the speaking rate. I can move a slider uh, to slow or to speed up the way that Siri speaks. Um, so let's come back to our pages um, piece of text and I'm going to tap and hold my text. I'll select it all and when I get my menu that I usually use um, which for some people we use for copying and pasting, but what's appeared now, fourth one along, is the option for speak. So if I tap that. Hello and welcome to a tutorial on assistive technologies. My name is Matt and I am dictating into the app pages. 
All right, so it's done a pretty good job of reading back that text. And a bit like speech to text, with text to speech, we can also use that in any app where there is selectable text. So if I want it to read, if I want Siri to read uh, part of a web page or within a book, so anywhere I can select text, uh, Siri will be able to read it back to me. When I say selectable text, I mean uh, that if you have text that's in an image or a photo, of course it won't be able to read that because it doesn't see it as characters. So as long as you can put your pins either side and select that text, we'll be able to read it back to you. So it makes it nice and easy. But one other feature in here, if I jump back into my settings and back into accessibility and back into spoken content, is the ability to show highlighted content. So for me, I'm going to go into there and turn it on, which it already is. And I'm going to choose words. Of course, I could choose sentences and words and sentences. I'll leave it at words for now. If I come back into my selected text, we might have noticed before that when I go to speak, Hello and it welcome to a tutorial on assistive technologies. My name is Matt and I am dictating into the app pages. So of course, if I don't want it to highlight any words, I jump back into here, back into accessibility, spoken content, highlight content, I can turn that off, or of course I can do sentences and so on. So, what about pronunciation of words? Sometimes Siri, when she pronounces words, could be a little bit incorrect. So I'm going to jump back into my accessibility and into my spoken content, and underneath the speaking rate slider is pronunciation. So if I tap on that and open it up, now for me, I have no pronunciations in here. I haven't found that I've needed to put any in. That doesn't mean to say that you don't, but for me, it hasn't been a necessity. So within here though, if I do want to, I've got a little plus in the top right hand corner. I'll tap that one and I can add a word or a phrase and then I can add a substitution. So if I was to put in a particular tricky word, um, it will, Siri, we're assuming, will say it wrong. Substitution, I might put it in a phonetic um, manner so that it will then read it back in a better way. So that's where I can put those phrases in there. But there is one other option as well. And this one actually is more a case of maybe even for a personal level, if you've got uh, friends or family who have names that Siri mispronounces. So we can actually correct the way that contacts are read to us. We'll have a look at that. So I'm going to bring up Siri. Now, I apologize to anyone in the world who might be called Sebastian Benedict, but I've used this sort of fake name to, to prove this. So, uh, so again, sorry to any Sebastian Benedicts that live out there. I'm going to tap and hold my home button and bring up Siri. You're saying the name Sebastian Benedict wrong. By the way, sorry, I didn't recognize that name. Can you teach me how to say it? Yes. Okay, let me hear how you say the name. Sebastian. Okay, thank you. Which pronunciation is it okay for me to use? So at this point, there are four options I can choose from. So I'll go through each of them. Sebastian. 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 Didn't mind option one, so I'll tap select. Okay, let me hear how you say the name. Benedict. Okay, thank you. Which pronunciation is it okay for me to use? And of course, again, I've got three options. I'll test Benedict. them out. Benedict. Benedict. All sound pretty similar, so I'll just pick number two. Got it. I'll remember how you say Sebastian Benedict from now on. So by doing that, now Siri's going to remember how to say that name. And like I said, this might be something given that it's contacts you might use on a personal level. But again, if it's saying a name wrong, it will correct it for you and that's how it remembers. So we've looked at three different things, how we can get speech to text, how we can get text to speech, and finally, how we can correct pronunciations of words, or phrases, and as I said at the very end there with um, contacts and names, very, very helpful. So I hope you learned something and uh, have a go yourself and I'll see you next time.